Even though it has a turbo under the hood, it's not that powerful, but it is smooth and handles pretty well for a three row SUV. What would you say if your wife or husband came home and this was in the driveway? This one's an R line. What about one with four motion, all wheel drive? Even to my surprise, you might want to consider the 2024 Atlas. My wife recently took the kids on a road trip and she came back very complimentary about this vehicle. And I must admit, she made a lot of good points. And gentlemen, when in doubt, always agree with your wife. It's a fact when it comes to big buying decisions, women make up the majority of the decision makers, or at least the people who give you the green light on whether or not you're gonna buy something, which is a big ticket item, like a vehicle. In this case, the 2024 Volkswagen Atlas. I was a little bit on the fence with it, and then my wife took it on a little road trip. She comes back glowing, absolutely glowing, on how much she likes this. She starts asking, is there a hybrid version? Does it come in an all electric version? Because we gotta get one of these. Naturally, I'm saying slow your roll. I just got it, 2024 just came out, but we wanna take a closer look before we make a big decision on what our next vehicle is gonna be. Because right now, she says green light all the way. So she took the kids on a trip to the water park. It's the end of summer, school's about to start. And so the three row option was incredible. And we got both kids who are in the booster seat range, you know, four years old and older. So the, the big guy sat in the back and she liked the ha fact that we had so much extra room back here if we wanted to separate the kids. And hey, parents, you know what I'm talking about? Separate the kids so it'll be a smoother, less chaotic drive. So we separated them. Big guys here, little gals over there. We got this storage area, which was great. We folded down this back row right here so we could have our, our big time stroller. That was a long stroller that fit perfectly back here. And there's a lot of good options and a lot of good versatility with this, which she was just couldn't stop raving about. And here's another element which makes this vehicle super family friendly. Got the sunshades. Of course, got a big trim level here. So we got all the cool bells and whistles. So obviously this is the, the girl's um, booster seat. This is enough room for three people. So even in the middle row, there was plenty of room. And of course, you gotta put your sippy cups and at least two or three sippy cups right here. That was very convenient. We folded that down so the big guy could have a little more leg room. Not that he needed it, but he had it. And those seats fold down in a 60-40 split option. So that one goes that way. It can also tip up a little bit to give you more access to the back row. Same thing right here. So for example, I move that over there, lift this here, and look at that. Then you can slide back there a lot easier. All that with one hand. And now he's got room there. You got an extra seat right here. And then slide this back. And there you go. See how easy that was? Actually, super easy. Barely any convenience, Ryan George. Now, what is it like for an adult to sit in the middle row of the Atlas? This too, plenty of space. Got the seat travel here, so if I want to, I can slide this up front and back, fold that up, which is simple with one hand, of course. Seating for me, headroom, beautiful, no problems, no issues whatsoever. Did I mention the legroom? Look at that, legroom. I still have room to slide back even more so. So if I want a maximum legroom, there you go for a guy who is 5'11". Now the kids didn't have any uh, devices to uh, watch in the car during this trip, but they do have plugins down below just in case, along with climate control for the rear passengers. So that's super convenient as well. Maybe it goes without saying, but I'll say anyway, the sunshade on this window, as well as that window. So it depends on if the kids are complaining about, oh, I can't see the sun's too bright. You got it over there as well as over here. All right, I'm gonna approach the vehicle. I have the key fob in my pocket. The vehicle is locked. Watch what happens. Recognizes I'm here and now I can go in. Now, the first thing a lot of parents may recognize is that there is a pass-through under the armrest uh, storage, or at least under the, um, the shifter area so you can put something down there whether it's supplies hey parents you know you need all these different cubbies that's a great place for that so let's go ahead and go inside and i'll show you some more all right now that we're inside here are some of the things that she pointed out and which are surprising to me because i didn't think of these when i was driving around but that's what's great about a he said she said or at least his perspective her perspective push button start right here uh, the park is right there i press the park put it in the park otherwise this way goes into reverse Nice big camera right there, down one for neutral, and then we have an option to just, uh, the drive option right there. So I'll put it in the park again. Now, when I was exploring the screen, as a parent, as a regular everyday driver, this right here brings it back to kind of a, an open spot, then I can slide it over, and you have different ways that you can look at settings on the vehicle. So back here, 
telephone, this is the media for your radio, or if you have Bluetooth, you can connect it that way. Navigation, vehicle information, automatic start-stop feature is available. Shows you your fuel economy since you were driving, since you started, long-term. So this is getting on average, what, uh, 21.4 miles per gallon. I'll give you some stats on this a little bit later. Since they refueled it, since they brought it to us, we're averaging 20, so not too bad at all. Now, when we were on this, I thought this was pretty frustrating at first. Like, where is the climate control? I don't see anything that says climate control right here. Turns out it's right down here at first. You know, it's like, oh, there's climate control. Now we can go from rear and front. So that's nice for the kids in the back, keeping them cool on these longer trips, especially when the temperatures are in the 80s and 90s. AC, of course. So that's where I found the climate and different drive modes. So if you want to pick up some speed, I was put it into sport. And when I did this, everything turned red. So that was pretty cool. So all the things have a red theme to them. Otherwise, I've been driving in comfort the most, most of the time. It does have the option of off-roading and snow mode. So watch what happens here. Now we're in blue mode. Ha! Off-road, yellow mode. Hee-haw! Off-road we go. Anyways, that's the, uh, the drive modes for this one here. So as long as you're maintaining the proper speed limit going around corners, not a problem at all. Very little, if any, body roll. All right, here's something I wasn't thrilled with at first until I started exploring it, and that is the instrument cluster. Fully digital, which is beautiful. The colors are more vibrant than I thought at first when I was driving around, but then when I started exploring, you can change the view of your instrument cluster. Now watch how everything changes. Just going through some options of what you see when you're driving. It also has a heads-up display, by the way all these different looks that you can have. Uh, it just makes a little, you know, some variety with what you're doing. And then on here, you can see that in my hand. Now on the left-hand side of the screen, you can so, you see the average speed, um, gear display, fuel tank display, assist, navigation, all the different things you might want to put on this side of your um, instrument cluster. And then on this side, I'm just going to change this side. So a lot of um, configurability with the instrument cluster, which at first, like, ah, oh, but then it turned out to be really cool. Another thing from my perspective, driving, no obstructions along the uh, windshield. The infotainment screen, nice and large, perfectly placed, doesn't get in your way whatsoever in terms of view and easy to reach for both the driver and the passenger. One more thing before we move on, wireless charging pad right there, two USB chargers, cup holders are nice and big, and this doesn't sit in the way at all. You know, shifting between, you know, reverse, neutral, and drive. In fact, let's get a little closer look at the backup camera itself. And you can see if I turn the wheel, the lane lines turn as well. So it helps you back in safely into any tight parking spots or if there's a curb nearby, you can see that. And then we got the 360 degree view here. Tap on the screen, shows you in the big area what you're looking at. Now here's the back in case I was loading something. Side mirror has a camera. Same on the left-hand side, there's a front view. Back view I like a lot, because that's gonna be the, the danger zone when you're driving backwards, Kenny Loggins, okay? So there's that. Another one of the big selling points for my wife was how spacious it was in the cabin, and that under storage of the, uh, the transmission shifter was a big plus for her, and then just the cubby holes, and the overall spacing between passengers in the driver's seat, passenger seat, as well as those in the back. So. Hey, if mom says it's okay, thumbs up all the way around. Now, I don't want to make this video too spec heavy. There's plenty of other influencer or reviewers out there that go overboard when it comes to stats and numbers. I've been guilty of that in the past, but not today. I'm going to stick with what, just some basic information. You know, I showed you the average miles per gallon since they refueled us a couple of, uh, about a week ago. It's like 21 and change. That's the mixed driving number they have on the sheet. So 19 city, 25 highway for a mixed driving number of 21. So Volkswagen is true to their word in 2024, at least for this vehicle here. This is a two liter turbo four cylinder eight speed automatic transmission all wheel drive so as you saw with those modes on the inside you can go about anywhere with this and the fuel economy is going to be spot on you're going to have the capability of going off road dealing with snow dealing with difficult weather conditions so yeah a versatile family suv okay that should be good i was thinking about giving this a grade after my week with it of probably putting it at a strong seven but after hearing my wife's compliments and all of the pluses and pros from her point of view, 
I'm gonna say it's a strong eight, if not an eight and a half. If you didn't know, the average price paid for a new vehicle in 2023 is $48,000 and change. This right here, brand new 2024 SEL Premium R-Line, under $54,000. Three row SUV, up-to-date technology, newer design, plenty of space, decent fuel economy. You know, my wife's got a, a lot of good points about this. This is something to seriously take a consider at uh, doing a test drive and uh, getting a closer look for yourself. For more information, check out everymandriver.com. Until next time, I'm Dave. Thanks for watching. Adios. Thanks for watching. Please cl click subscribe and give us a thumbs up. See you next time.